What you're about to watch is from the most recent live stream and the indentured spirit that was covered in that video. This is the actual math that I go through to find the CR numbers and compare it to what's printed. And with that intro out of the way, let's get right into the video. All right, indentured spirit, it's a CR1 and it's from Guildmaster's Guide to Ravnica. All right, where did I put you? There we go. Let's find that monster. 206, so it's probably on 207. Perfect. All right, so we have an indentured spirit from GGR here. And uh, let me split this so we can see both pages. And I will shrink that just a little bit because we don't need the whole thing here. We just want the stat blocks. <laughs> All right, so I've never seen this monster before, and we're going to put it through my, my little machine here and see what kind of numbers we come up for it. It's supposed to be a CR1, so hopefully this indentured spirit is a CR1. So let's go ahead and pop this in for our expected CR1, because that works with hit point modifications and such. And we're going to look at the AC. So we have a AC of 11 and its hit points. So let's see here. Throw in the 11, which is already pretty low medium spirit and it has 3d8 uh, constitution wisdom and charisma so we don't need to worry about the constitution it's already a 10 the wisdom is a 12 we don't have to worry about that because that is only for the uh what is it fiendish blessing is the only reason i have charisma in here and then uh let's see so i have fiendish blessing and the charisma for for that for charisma uh, the wisdom is for the other version of that, which is somewhere around here. But it's like the monk thing. I don't quite remember remember off the top of my head. But anyways, so its constitution is a 10. Let's take a look at the rest of this monster here. And uh, I wonder, can I draw on the side? No, it's got to be for that page. All right, so we've got damage resistances to acid, fire, lightning, thunder, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks, as well as three conditions from damage immunities. Uh, we have cold, necrotic, and poison. So it's immune to those, and it's got resistance to those other things. So right off, we've got ourselves a pretty nasty anti-spellcaster monster. Now, I know because the CR1 is so low that we can already just either put in resistances or immunities. It doesn't really matter. As we'll see right here, uh, let me bring this back up, in this little box I have dashed out, regardless if I switch this to resistance or immunities, this is always going to be a two times hit points. So if we switch to immunities, doesn't change. Because of its CR range, this is also going to be two times hit points. So we can leave it with immunities just for the sake of it. And we'll see that, okay, two times the hit points, it only had 13 to start with, so its effective hit points is going to be a 26, as we see over on the side here. So, you know, bam. Uh, effective hit points 26 from the two times hit points, which is pretty nice. Next, uh, conditions. We don't worry about the conditions. That's nothing we need to worry about. Uh, incorpor incorporeal movement. Uh, the spirit can move through other creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain. Uh, again, incorporeal movement doesn't really matter. So we can skip over incorporeal movement and go and take a look right at its, excuse me, at its actions. Now, already we're seeing that our DCR is a zero for a monster with the low AC and the low hit points. And we can verify this by looking at the stat blocks here before we get into its attack just for the heck of it. So, uh, our monster only has 11 hit points, but effectively, uh, 22, or did I, did it seem, high? oh no, 26, yeah, of course. So, 26 is going to throw us right there. Let's get that a little smaller. But, because of the expected AC of 13, our monster has an 11, because of that difference, we unfortunately have to shift this down one step because there's a two 
two AC difference in the expected and what it actually has. This is minus two, which results in a minus one shift. So right off the bat, we're already at a CR zero for its, its defensive CR value. Uh, yes, I did. It is based off of the, the program I'm using here is based off of something else I've seen and I've used in the past. Um, just so I'm, just so I make sure I have this program from what it was being used, I've basically used the same thing that it had. I've also added stuff. So the original program or the, the original web page didn't have the bonuses that show you right away. So for instance, if uh, we say, okay, this monster has ambusher, it shows right off, oh, okay, it's getting a plus one effective attack bonus or uh, hit points. No, not the blessing, I'm sorry, uh, frightful presence. Okay, cool. It's gonna it's gonna calculate the hit points and show you exactly what uh, the monster is getting there. So, this is based off of something else I've used in the past, and uh, I recreated it in Google Sheets because I wanted to tweak certain things and add in some stuff that wasn't there. So, like for instance, being able to see right off the bat what the immunities are giving you, what the save proficiencies are giving you. Uh, for instance, if I switch it switch this from zero to two to three to four saves, we'll see like our monster would get plus two effective hip uh, AC. And that would be, uh, you would see that immediate change from uh, it's expected to its effective hit points because of uh, these changes that I've put on the screen here. So I'm still working out the, the tweaks. Thank you. Um, I'm still working out the the kinks on this i'd say it's probably at a version 0 0.8 right now and uh looking forward to being able to share this uh with everyone else that likes to create their own monsters and wants a a very quick and easy way to pull this stuff together all right so back to where we were with this indentured spirit so far our dcr is very low <laughs> extremely low even with immunities and resistances this this monster, this ghost, is not looking so hot. So, let's take a look at its uh, its actions over here on the side. Uh, let's see here. Let me pull up the light shot. That way I can highlight what I'm talking about over here since I can't use my thing. And the withering touch is a plus three to hit with only 10.5 uh, damage. So let's add in the, well, we don't have to worry about adding in the three because, well, it's already at a base three. And its damage is, like I said, 10.5 because every one die technically is, the average is ha um, half the die plus an extra half point. So a D6 is worth 3.5 on average, a D12 is 6.5 and so on. So it's important actually to make sure we have that in play. So that's why even though this is 3d6 and you would think, oh, the average is three, uh, 3d6 should net you 10. Well, we have three half die damages as well. So that's where the 10 comes from. Any half damages round down, as I'm sure you're aware of in my previous videos. So we'll just add in the 10 damage and see where we're at here. Okay. So we have a DP, uh, damage per round is 10 and it doesn't have anything else going on. Let's see here. Is there anything down here? Nope. That's a different monster. So it looks like we have an overrated monster. Uh, apparently, uh, if everything is correct, which I'm pretty sure it is, uh, we have 10 average damage per round and uh, let's see here. So we have our 10 average damage per round and an attack bonus of three, which is coming from its proficiency bonus of two plus its dex bonus of plus one. We're getting an attack bonus of three. So the attack bonus is, is correct. There's nothing else modifying the attack bonus. Uh, yeah, it looks, that's, everything looks good. So let's take a look at our chart here. Uh, so clear all that out. Its damage per round is a 10, which we saw in the chart was a one. What do you mean, how many show up at a time, Rivers? While I'm waiting for that answer, I will continue working through this here. So yeah, this is perfectly fine. 
Uh, its attack bonus is a three. It's expecting a three. So we don't shift the DCR or the OCR one here. Oh, yeah, I don't. I, I don't know. Let's, I mean, if we look at the. Trait to goes with a ruin, whatever the face. I mean, it doesn't really say anything about, you know, having pack tactics or working with other monsters. I'm just working directly from the uh, the stat block here. So, every all of its information I work off of directly from here. You know, the most important spots being the attacks. Anything in here, usually, I, I don't bother with the rest below there. And that those are my main points of information. Uh, especially occasionally uh, the traits, if there's something going on with the traits. I mean, even with more monsters, uh, this isn't going to be a big deal. So it, each one of these, even if we had two, I mean, in essence, if there were two indentured spirits, would the uh, if you go by the old rules of calculating XP based off of like how many monsters are there that just shifts the amount of XP per day. I don't think they're working off of that. I really believe they're only working off of all the information in the chart here. So it looks like this is an overrated monster. So when we look at the, uh, the big old stat block over here on the side, which is all of its effective information and whatnot, it's, an OCR 1, a DCR 0, resulting in a half. And there you have it. That's how you break down and expose the monster's CR values. If you like what you've seen, hit the subscribe button down below and give the video a thumbs up. I post daily. And until next time, thanks for watching.